what on earth is going on in the House of Commons? my channel my name is Jess and uh, I think this is the first time I've done a standing video why you ask well I just didn't have time to set it up where I could be sitting things are everywhere that's not the point this is an emergency book community because I mean the book internet is going wild and there's still more things that aren't even gonna be addressed in this video and I was like I need to make this right now so we're gonna get into that really quickly also do you like my shirt it says what a time to be alive and anxious yeah, it's me. I'm anxious and what a time indeed. But it's from Boardwalk. Um, they sent me this one, so thank you so much. And if you wanna use my code Jess Owens, I'll have the link below in the description. You can get 10% off anything you order from them. And good luck because they have too many amazing things. So good luck limiting into one, get two, get five. Whatever, I'm gonna order myself some more. <laughs> but um, just thank you for them sending me the shirt. I love it. But let's get into the mess. We're gonna start. We're gonna start quickly with this hoodlum, hood river, hood booger, whatever. <laughs> so I'm just minding my business, scrolling on TikTok as I do, and I see something, and I'm like, that can't be what I think it is. And the book is like a book, it has a black man on the cover, and it says Hoodlum Heat. And then at the bottom it's like Caleb, so I'm like, I don't know who this is, let me look this up. And yes, she is, she is. And I, so it's a, it's a whole series, so let me look it up. Um, and this is just a special novella I think you can get for free if you buy them from her website. She's a whole bunch of books. Um, some that I've seen and other ones that I'm not familiar with, but this one, <laughs> this series is called The Hood River Hoodlums. So the first one is Hood River Rat, Little Hoodlum, Campfire Chaos, Hood River Zero, and then the novella, which isn't here on Goodreads, was Hoodlum Heat. So people saw that and were like, don't love that because of the connotation of hoodlum. And so she, I think I could insert her apology video here um, that was on TikTok or her apology statement, whatever. Hi, everyone. I'm sure you guys have been seeing posts um, about one of my books. My Hood River Hoodlum series takes place in Hood River, Oregon. Um, Hoodlums being a play on the uh, Hood River city name. However, it's come to my attention that it's um, hurt, hurting my black and brown readers um, even before the first page is turned. Although that's not my intention, it is the result. I'm all for pushing boundaries, but not this. This isn't something that I would ever want to do. I, I would never want to hurt anybody. So I'm in the process of changing um, the titles, working with some sensitivity readers, and have taken to deleting any of those um, posts. I'm so sorry if this has hurt you, but I am working on it and I will make this right. Thank you for reading and being a supporter. But it's like in 2022, you don't know how the word hoodlum has been used. And then you decide to include a black man in that story. It's just like, we're not using our brain cells now, are we? Someone did read it. And I guess it's a short read, obviously, because it's a novella. And this person said they had no problem picking this up just to see where it went. Um, also, the audio narrator is Jacoby DM. But people are like oh no not him being the audiobook narrator because i think he is a favorite male narrator for a lot of people and then but in the video she said that she says like jacoby and like shout out to jacoby dm i think that's his name for narrating the book like wouldn't you know the name of the person who, audio, who like narrated your audiobook or wouldn't you just double check before you made a video it's very odd so anyway this person continues to say um that the audio narration was fine but 
He said he couldn't save this from being bland as all get out. This wasn't so much offensive on the front of anything that this author typically writes for content. Um, but the book is a black hero, white heroine written from the perspectives of one of the brothers. Terrence is what is a prequel to a full series. You learn a little, very little about both him and the heroine through this read, apart from his love of basketball and hoodlum brothers. <laughs> Um, I know that this author is probably used to writing alpha douchebag white characters and bully romances, but there's a choice made here assigning a specific stereotypical negative pejoratives to black men. Like even the fact that the hero says that one of his brothers is our psychotic hoodlum and uses it as an affectionate term is a choice. Describes himself as trouble, his grandma being on his case, having problems with authority and he can't keep a job. Setting is the Hood River on a campsite. The long and short of what it is seems he comes across a rival white girl that he affectionately calls Moaning Lisa, and they have a one night stand, but there's many cringeworthy ways the encounter is depicted. The obligatory, oh my God. The obligatory once you go black is definitely used here by him to her. He describes that he's used to being with a certain kind of woman, big breast, ass, but can't stop talking about her small tits and going on about how perfect she is. Terrence's commentary on his own body, her perceived desire for him and need to protect feel not only just like your typical copy paste alpha white male hero, but playing into stereotypes about black men regarding their bodies and how they are fetishized by white women. He says in the book, I love the fact that she's been tainted by a hoodlum. Am I supposed to take a line like that and interpret it as this being a nerd girl being with a jock or are you saying that this white girl is tainted somehow by a black guy because it reads as both. I was very much not okay with that among a few other descriptions to say the least. Even though your kind doesn't belong with people like us, stated by the hero, feels like shade. Though one could also argue that this meant to convey it nerds versus jocks versus the interracial. <sighs> Romance. Honestly, mostly bored by this novella because I didn't feel like I got to know either of the characters very well. And after the one night stand and the resulting events that don't really have either an HEA or an HFN, it made me go, why did I waste my time with these two? Wow. Just why? Why? But then apparently this author is notorious for other questionable things written in her romance. So Someone quote tweeted uh, or, you know, showed her video when she was talking about the books. And then, so then Bran on Twitter said, I'm not surprised the woman that wrote a romance about two brothers fucking in between eating chunks out of their mother would do a racism. Do you need me to read that back? I'm going to read it again. I'm not surprised the woman that wrote a romance about two brothers fucking in between eating chunks out of their mother. So of course everyone's like, what? And Bryn said on one hand, it's listed as a dark romance, horror. When I read it, it was just a too taboo romance. On the other, sometimes just having fucked up secret stories you tell yourself is fun. And of course we were like, what? And Bryn said, no, cause she straight up said, fuck it. This romance has rape, incest, cannibalism, torture, and a happily ever after. So it seems like she writes a lot of male male romances. Obviously this novella is a man and a woman. There's, I mean the hoodlum heat was already bad enough and then there's just layers and you just like keep digging and it gets worse. So all to that to say, this is not to say, don't you dare read that. Don't read anything about the author, no. Just letting you know <laughs> some of the latest drums that's been going on on the book internet and that one was, extremely appalling to me and my eyeballs so you just know about it now you know about it do with that what you will okay moving on to this other terrible thing that is going on so i don't know well obviously if you're not on twitter you probably haven't seen this if you are you may have but barney and noble is fucking up well i mean when haven't they been fucking up i'm just like i really want to talk to their people at corporate like who's up top making these decisions because they're doing terribly like i i really want them to talk to me i really want them like my emails down below if any of y'all are watching email me like i'm willing to you know zoom we can facetime conference call for free like i want to help y'all because you're struggling but now this new thing is happening so i saw a thread 
being shared about Barnes and Noble. And it says Barnes and Noble is withholding initial support of debut hardcovers till they find evidence is worth stocking in their stores. They'll be focusing on guaranteed sales from paperbacks, a middle finger to debut authors, especially if they're midless and marginalized. Get mad, y'all. Traditionally published already don't give midless and marginalized authors the marketing support needed to thrive and survive. If Barnes and Noble withholds their support to stock debut titles in store until they receive some sign the book is worthy, this will give traditional publishing more incentive to throw more money behind the books they want to be considered worthy. And most of the time, the debut books trad publishing uplifts are white or white appealing ones. This is bad, bad, bad all around. Can y'all imagine the ramifications of this in an industry that looks up to BNN like it's a deity? As the largest US book retailer, BNN already has influence on things such as book covers. This puts more power into BNN's hands, power that impacts a debut sales and career. Even if a debut doesn't hit the bestseller list, a debut author sales impact future book deals and advanced sizes. Good sales can give debut authors, especially midless and marginalized ones, leverage at the bargaining table. The fact BNN is messing with folks' bags and careers is wild AF. And so I was looking for like an article or something, like a statement from Barnes & Noble, and I couldn't find that. And so, of course, people were asking, like, is there anything like official on this? And that person who wrote that thread and other people who've been making threads were like, it's not like an official statement, but that they've been hearing from authors who have books coming out that their books will not be carried. In Barnes and Noble, because if you don't, if you don't know, mainly excluding generally romance is the only books typically in the United States that come out brand new in paperback. Sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes like Orbit will publish, you know, they have their floppy paperbacks, but generally books from children's middle grade through adult that are brand new in the U.S. come out in hardcover first. And then if they do well enough, they will get a paperback print usually about a year after the hardcover comes out. And let me tell you, I hate it because <laughs> I hate waiting that long for a paperback. I wish honestly it was the reverse that paperback came out first. And then if it did well, they would do the hardback, but whatever. That's not the point here. So I have another thread that was talking more about it and then has a lot of authors quote it quote it in the replies so all the authors here who have books that are coming out i am going to link down below um also i'll put on the screen here's where i feel conflicted because i do like being in obviously there are national booksellers so major places you go um they're going to be there and they're very important they're like the last major chain that we have outside of amazon for books and we need those. Obviously, I love to support independent bookstores when I can use bookstores, but sometimes it's just easy to go into a Barnes and Noble and know that the books that you're looking for are gonna be there. Or well, you used to know that. And Barnes and Noble, obviously, like I said, has not been making great business decisions. I think some tweet said something like half of their store is a toy, a Toys R Us, and that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, I feel torn because I want to say if you're seeing these books, you want to get these books and you're able, you have one near you to go into a Barnes and Noble and try to request it if you can, if they can order it for you to buy it. So like that encourages them that or and like shows them that people actually want these books and like hmm, maybe this is a dumb idea. But then I'm also like, man, support independent bookstores. Like, I mean, but you can do both. You can do either or you don't have to do either. I mean, if you buy your books from Amazon, it's your prerogative. I can't tell you what to do with your money, but this is just unfortunate. So I'm gonna share this thread. There's a lot of misinformation, but here are the facts. One, Barnes and Nobles is refusing to stock most authors on shelves. It disproportionately affects marginalized authors, debut and middle grade. So here's a thread of confirmations from authors, agents, editors, and booksellers. So I have Brittany S. Lewis, who has the book, The Undead Truth of Us coming out. And Brittany said, I don't know if I've cried more. This directly affects me. It will has impacted sales because my book isn't the book of the season. It means you won't find it in that store and grab it off the shelf. My black voice isn't worthy enough. I've waited 10 years for a slap in the face. And it's devastating because I've worked my ass <laughs> I've worked my ass off, I'm guessing. I've sacrificed so much for this, had multiple agents, been on sub multiple times, only to sell my book when black voices mattered. Oh, but don't worry, you can still get it online. Anyway, while I go cry about my future and my dream being ripped to shreds, if you want a signed copy of The Under Truth of Us, you can get it from my local indies. 
Also imagine the embarrassment when my friends and family ask me why they can't find my book in store when they know it's been sold to a major publisher. Like that's such the fucked part. Like sold to a major, major publisher and that's supposed to be one of the main benefits. You know that you can get into these big stores. You can get your books put up in places where people who may not have heard of you can walk in and just be like, ooh, what is this? I'm curious. I love this cover or I love this title. Because even though a lot of us see books that are recommended books by each other online what is part of that part of that is us telling like gushing about the book or maybe ranting about the book but we're not let's not lie to ourselves that a lot of it is the cover and the title and so when you go into a store I'm sure you might go with something in mind or I used to be this weirdo who would just go into the bookstore and like look for something and so that's not you don't have it on display like that is directly hurting people especially debut and that's just so hurtful but it's not only debuts there are other people on here who have already been published who have found out that their books also won't be a Barnes and Noble <sighs> another debut author Lane who has the book called time love times infinity coming out this was absolutely the hardest part of debut week okay maybe the book's already out Going to the store and not seeing it, looking online and seeing it wasn't in stock within 100 miles of my home at any Barnes & Noble. Being told there wasn't anything anyone could do. I hustled my ass off and it feels like it didn't matter. BNN gets to tell publishers what books to buy, ask me how I know. And then we follow their rules and they don't support the book anyway. Uphill battle every step of the way. Door slammed in your face every step of the way, people telling you not to let it upset you. When you are literally watching everything you work for mean nothing to the people who control your fate. I don't know why this keeps happening, but it's getting a lot harder to feel like it's an accident. Being in was my happy place, weekly visits for as long as I can remember, but I haven't stepped foot since debut day. I gotta ride for those who ride for me. Another debut author, Kia Brown, and I'm trying to find the name of her book. Let's see. Oh my God. Her profile says Paramore super fan. Same. Okay. Her book is called Sam's Super Seats and Kia said what do you do when you find out that your debut children's book will not be in stores at Barnes and Noble because of a policy change you make a video about it and I can link that down below but then she also has a link if you would still like to support me and make sure this book reaches as many children as possible between the public on August 23rd and forever more please consider pre-ordering here. So August 23rd, it's not August 23rd yet. So if you want to pre-order the book, you still can, or if you want to order it from other websites. Uh, we have another author, Lindsay Curry, who has The Girl in White coming out. She said, so you may have already heard that Barnes & Noble is strategically not stocking hardbacks for most middle grade books. Sadly, that includes me, The Girl in White, despite the fact that my other books have achieved bestseller flags with them many times before. I'm beyond upset. Knowing my readers will not be able to find my book in any of their stores hurts. Knowing that it will impact my sales hurts, I'm truly at a loss for words. We also have Kaylin Barron, who's published multiple books at this point that have been bestsellers, I'm pretty sure. So if you're planning on buying The Vanquishers, which I think is her middle grade book, I just want to let y'all know that Barnes and Nobles at this point in time won't be carrying it on their shelves. I have lots to say about this and need a moment to gather my thoughts. I want to say that BNN booksellers have been incredibly supportive and it's partly because of them that my young adult sales have been so good with BNN. It isn't their fault. It is just awful. And then someone shared that they're a Barnes and Noble bookseller. And Colby said, as a Barnes & Noble bookseller, I fucking hate this. There are so many books I want to stock to sell and corporate refuses to order them. But even if they're not in our stores, you can still order from us if you wish to. Just please support authors, especially debut and marginalized authors. And so someone asked, um, can I share this in my thread? And they said, sure, the focus on paperback sales means that we've started to see hardcovers become unavailable to order into the store months out from their paperback releases and some months after their release date. It's defense indefensible and hurting sales we know we can make if they let us. And while I'd like for everyone to know that we can still fulfill customer orders for these books, I also want to be transparent about what's happening because telling customers they have to wait on a book that's not in my store nor any surrounding stores is driving them elsewhere. And some they asked, could you clarify what you mean by fulfill customer orders? And Colby said, you can still order books online or from the store to either be sent to your home or to be picked up in store when they arrive. We just can't order these books to be placed on our shelves. 
So if you do still want to support your local Barnes & Noble, you are able to do that. You're just gonna have to order it and I guess wait for it to be delivered to your house or whenever they get it at the store. But they just won't, you know, like normally when you come in and you see all the new releases, they're just not all going to be there because they said in all of these things, like ones that they don't know like basically they have to prove that they're going to be worthy so you know that they're going to be certain books by certain authors that are definitely going to be in there when they come out brand new and then other ones that won't all i know is i mean i already pre-ordered it but amari and amari and the great game better be out on shelves in barnes and noble this is ridiculous. There are more authors in this thread. Like I said, I'm gonna go through this thread and any author that has shared, I'll make sure that I link their books down below because I know also Kelly Yang, which has had many books I've heard of um, from Ashley A Bookish Realm. And Kelly said, Barnes & Noble has suddenly decided not to carry Key Player, the fourth front desk book coming out in two weeks. Here are the new details of their new nationwide strategy, only giving shelf space only giving shelf space for top one to two books per publisher. I am not top enough, apparently. I'm sorry I'm so emotional over this, but I am terrified of what this means for marginalized authors. This industry is already so hard and to take away our shop before our books can even get out the gate just feels so wrong. So Barnes and Nobles, a big fuck you, but let's support these authors. Check out the books if you have any interest in them or think someone in your life would enjoy the story think about pre-ordering or um buying the book to support the author it's just so fucked like <laughs> what i really like obviously i envision the like the the, co the corporate room and it's a big old desk and it's just a bunch of like middle-aged to older white dudes maybe like two white women in there they might have a person of color for you know they need that representation but and they're all like yeah fuck em. we know that uh james patterson Stephen King, Sarah J. Mass, whoever, certain people, you know, that have multiple books, like, they're fine. We'll have plenty of room to stock their books. Another set of Lord of the Rings, bring it on. We'll have that on full display. All these new books that could reach people who haven't seen themselves depicted in media. <laughs> who needs that? So, mess. Check out the description. Okay, we're already at 21 minutes and I did not mean for this to be this long, but the last thing I wanna to touch on is Alex Astor. So I know a lot of people have been hearing about this. Some people know more than others. I think this started more on TikTok, but um, this has gone over to book Twitter. So Alex Astor is a young person whose book Light Lark comes out August 23rd. So I remember seeing her um, on TikTok randomly a while ago talking about like the book deal, whatever. Um, and I just was like, oh, okay. And so with this book coming out soon, people have been reading the arcs that they have and some people have enjoyed it. And some people think it's terrible. And I guess Alex has promoted the book on TikTok duh and has been talking about certain lines that are supposed to be in the book certain tropes certain scenes and people are like you misrepresented the book because these things are not in it so they're not happy there um there's also been conversation that alex is an industry plant because like where did she come from why is why is so much promotion behind this book i the book also the rights for the movie have been purchased um, people are like, wow, this book isn't even out. And so there's just a lot of conversation around Alex Astor, some theories, some, you know, things from people who just generally read the book and didn't like it. But then also people have been like one star bombing the book on Goodreads. So I'm looking at Goodreads right now. And it is, what day is it? It's Friday the 19th and it's at a 2.57. It is out it is overwhelmingly one star reviews and now i don't agree on doing that to any book unless maybe it's born just kidding but i just don't think that's fair to any book especially one that isn't even out yet that you haven't read i mean i don't review books i haven't read even if a book is coming out by my favorite author i don't even go just put a five star on there but that's just me this is not this is terrible so here's when the first these things were first being talked about industry plant now y'all know i love a theory I love me a good conspiracy theory. Now, while I truly believe there are booktube plants, 
don't get me started. This one, I'm like, this is an industry plan. When I went, I went back and was watching her TikTok. She's almost at a million. She's a young, fair skinned gal. Um, and so she made TikToks pitching her book basically like saying this is my book about this secret island that pops up and every so often and they have to do a battle and it was pitched as Akatar meets the Hunger Games and those TikToks got a lot of attention and someone saw that and was like bam TikTok is very a lot of people in the media industry movie or not I won't say movie but music and books are really like wanting people to make things that are going to appeal to people on TikTok who or is going to encourage content on TikTok. I hate it, but that's the truth. So you have this young, fair skinned woman who pitches her book on TikTok. It gets a lot of attention. She has a lot of followers. So she got a book deal. That's literally it. I was like, okay, yeah, this privileged gal. Now going back to watch her videos, the only thing that bothers me is that her videos are constantly like, I've worked 10 years for this after so many, um, what do you call them? After so many rejections and da, da 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 The only thing that bothers me is that I feel like it was giving off, I worked hard, so this is why this came true. When uh, I think you got lucky and then also you had privileges that made it possible for you to continue to work on your book. Whereas other people don't have that luxury, they either have to work a job or multiple, take care of family, do all these things. And I guess her family, I don't know how wealthy they are. I didn't Google. I'm not, I know that Rachel, and I'll link the video, I'm not sure when it's out, has a video about who is Alex Astor. So if you want more information, watch that video. I am not wasting, I am exhausted with the amount of things going on in the book world right now. This one, I could not be bothered to deep dive into. I know enough. I will give you the basics and then you can watch Rachel's video for a deeper dive and then you can go Google if you want more. Alex Astor's family has a dealership in Florida. I think that's where she's from. I think her sister is worth a lot of money. And so she obviously wasn't out here struggling. She had comfort, she has support, able to write, uh, work on this book. And then it being, you know, catching a titchin and the algorithm working in her favor. And they're like, oh yeah, well, this person already has a big following on TikTok. That's going to sell books. Do publishers, do the people who are getting these rights from certain books or for certain books, picking up certain books that get a lot of attention or whatever, really pick them up because they're like, oh, this book is so good? No. Now we've even seen that with um, authors who have a long backlist, only black book a night. They were like, this person already has a high following. This means that they can promote the hell out of their book. We'll give it a cute cover and we're gonna sell. And that's all they care about, selling, selling the book. That's what they care about. So that's what I feel like it is. She ha it comes from a privileged background. She got lucky with the TikTok algorithm and building this following and bam, here's the book. I don't know how movie rights works. Like, I don't know how someone decides, but it definitely can happen and has happened before books have come out. Didn't Tomi Adeyemi, Children of Blood and Bone, before that book was even out, already had movie rights purchased for it? Like it was like a seven figure deal. This is not the first time that has happened. So I guess it's a lot of misinformation. A lot of people who don't know that a book doesn't have to come out and have already be, been out for the rights to be acquired for it to make it a movie. Um, conspiracy theories that people just like to have fun with and then people, which is fair, people mad that you can be mediocre. No, I have not read this book. You can be mediocre and be successful. Have y'all not witnessed America? This is why y'all need to read nonfiction because if y'all had read mediocre with book community, you would have known. And, and this is not to say her book is mediocre. I've heard it's not good, but I also have a friend who enjoyed it. It is not something I am interested in, but are we shocked that mediocrity, if it is mediocre, is, is thriving? Come on, that is a theme of the United States of America. Get it together. <laughs> we know in publishing especially, mediocrity wins all the time. So this is not new. So I don't know why this one gained so much steam and carried away. I mean, maybe it's just a combination of things, um, but I do think it's wrong how people are, you know, doing her book on Goodreads. Just wanted to jump in for a moment and say that also Chloe Gong has been brought into this again, if you don't know. 
I don't know, a lot of people seem to have it out for Chloe Gong, who is a very young, young adult author. And I guess she blurbed this book um, and really loved it. And so people are like, why is Chloe Gong always involved in mess? And it's like, maybe she genuinely really did like the book. There's also conversations on uh, Alex Astor's ethnicity, um, because it is said that she may be um, Latina and then um, people have said that she has claimed to be indigenous but she's not indigenous and then there's just all these conversations that I am not qualified and don't know enough about to go into further but there's just many things that people have been saying about Alex Astor and the people who are around her. And um, I know that I feel like she's been maybe in some people's comments going back and forth with them on TikTok which is not a good look once you're an author. So that's not good, but I still don't think the book deserves to be bombed on Goodreads. So the book comes out, I'm sure she was already paid part of her advance. She'll probably be fine, but there was the rundown and drama on that. Huh, but this is a 29 minutes and I am tired and I need to edit this and get this up because it's already 9 a.m. So let me know any of your thoughts about any of the things. Again, please check out those links to those books for those authors that are coming out. And if you have any other authors um, that you've seen on social media who have books out and they said they know they're not going to be Barnes and Noble, please share below. Uh, because obviously we're going to have to try to do our best since these corporations with all the power and the money won't do it. <laughs> Love that. Anyway, uh, I think that's all for me. Again, check out my description and you can use my code just owned if you want to get 10% off an order from Boardwalk. Thank you to Boardwalk for this very cute shirt. Um, and I think that's going to do it for me. It's raining. I really want to take a nap. <laughs> But even though it's raining, I do have my sunscreen on. So what? <laughs> Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.